Alright, so I have switched to an external view. The first thing I'm going to do is start plugging in wavelengths. Just for the departure, just so I can get going right away. So we want CPU at 6000. RCS. And Okay, I got some good distance there. Now, I'm going to bring up the heads up display. And I'm going to add in, I want to be at 250 knots. So, I pressed F11 to bring that up, by the way. You can just go into F10 and then autopilot settings and then use F10 to hide the menu again. Well, it turns out I'm taking off from the wrong end of the runway, so hold on a second. Okay, now I'm at the correct end of the runway the current weather. Oh yeah, you'll want to configure, set up your altimeter that most autopilots don't even bother to look at, just for realism, and hope that you actually get a really good autopilot that actually does bother with the altimeter. Okay, drop the set of flaps. Normally you'd have your parking brake set. Oops. I'm gonna try and take off now. And this is not easy at all with the mouse. Ah crap. And the lag. Oh crap. Okay, I got it centered somehow. Ah, uh, whoa. Okay, that was not good. <laughs> okay, we're alive, and all the passengers are airsick already. Okay, now let's put in the other autopilot um, waypoints and stuff. Next, you're going to want to start adding the waypoints from the instrument arrival procedure since well what else are you going to do while you wait like an hour to get there right so um where was I wait so that's that so we want CARM at 10,000 now you should generally follow these guidelines as they help they really, really do. They're not strict, but you should try to get down there.
and I just goofed. Remember what I said about that you should try to get down there? Yeah, don't listen to that. It's a lie. Ex for here, expect to cross at 12,000 feet. You better expect to cross at 12,000 feet if you're flying a jet. Otherwise, you'll be too low and it will become unsafe. So now, start using 12,000 feet. Then, for the next one, you want to be at 10,000 